Hello. I'm hoping this is working. I don't know. Is anyone out there? <laughs> anyone at all? <gasps> we have people joining in. Oh my god. Hello. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Keep joining in, people. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. That's probably already apparent. Hey, Ruby. Um, I am a compulsive over planner, usually. Hey, hi. Um, I'm a compulsive over planner, but I've decided not to bother planning this at all. So it's going to be vaguely improvised. Um, and there's going to be a lot of stream of consciousness apparently already um but i just thought i would start hello rob uh start by um reading a poem first i guess um not one of my poems this is a poem by gerard manley hopkins uh sort of victorian poet one of my favorites and if i can find the poem da, da, da. Hmm. It's the best poem. It's so musical and beautiful and just, I think about it all the time and you're going to love it. So I'm going to read some poems. I might read one or two of my poems because, you know, I'm vain. And then I'll maybe recommend some books, take some questions from y'all if you have questions. I mean, feel free if you have questions, if you want recommendations, whatever, start, start uh, typing in the comments. Um, yeah, okay, I found the poem. It's called The Wind Hover. It's about a bird. I caught this morning, morning's minion, kingdom of daylight's dauphin, doppeldon drawn falcon in his riding of the rolling level, underneath him steady air, and striding high there, how he rung upon the rein of a wimpling wing in his ecstasy, then off, off forth on swing, as a skate's heel sweeps smooth on a bow bend, the hurl in gliding rebuffed the big wind, my heart in hiding stirred for a bird, the achieve of, the mastery of the thing. Brute beauty and valor and act, O oh, air, pride, plume, here buckle, and the fire that breaks from thee then, a billion times told lovelier, more dangerous, O oh, my chevalier, no wonder of it. Sheer plod makes plough down silly and shine, and blue bleak embers, ah, my dear, fall, gall themselves, and gash gold vermilion. One of my favorite poems. I just wanted to read it out loud, share it with you all. Um, so we're living in pretty fucking crazy times. Um, I don't know about anyone else. I'm going like a little bit stir crazy because... Um, it's just weird to not be able to do the things you normally do, to connect with people in the ways that you normally do. Uh, Ariel, that poet was Gerard Manley Hopkins. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that, you know, I've been posting these poems every day on the Your Shelf uh, stories. You might have seen them um, and on Twitter as well, uh, basically calling them poems for the crisis. And it's basically just poems that I think might bring you comfort or joy or humor or light in some kind of way um, because I think we all need a little bit of that right now. I certainly do. <laughs> I've been finding it myself just a huge, huge comfort um, and hopefully you all have been as well. And I thought that maybe because every single other person alive apparently is doing this, going live on their Instagram, I thought that we would do the same and we would chat and read poems together and, um, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever else we can do on Instagram live for a book community account. Um, also, you know, if you all have any ideas of other things that we can be doing during this time to... Uh, ease the boredom or the sense of isolation that you might be feeling, please let us know. Um, obviously, you might have heard our Your Shelf podcast. We've had three episodes out so far. Our most recent one came out just last week uh, with Lynn Gunn from Paris. She's really cool. It's a really fun episode. Um, 
we're hoping to maybe uh, connect with some other kind of writers and other cool people um, over, you know, like Skype and FaceTime and whatnot and record some mini episodes maybe over the next few weeks while we're trapped here um, <laughs> in this weird and slightly terrifying place. But I don't think it needs to be too terrifying all the time. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, again, if y'all have any questions, if you want to recommend anything for me to read, please do. Um, otherwise, I'm going to... Sorry. I'm going to read another poem for y'all. So you might have seen me actually post this one the other day. Um, this is from Sean Hewitt's pamphlet, Lantern. It's a very beautiful pamphlet and a very beautiful poem. It's the first one in the co collection. It's called Leaf. <clears throat> for woods are forms of grief grown from the earth, for they creak with the weight of it. For each tree is an altar to time, for the oak whose every knot guards a hushed symbol of water, for how the silver water holds the heavens in its eye, for the axle tree of heaven and the sleeping coil of wind, and the moon keeping watch, for how each leaf traps light as it falls, for even in the nighttime of life it is worth living, just hold it. I love those last two lines, they're just very comforting, I think, especially at this time. Um, so yeah, if you're just tuning in, um, welcome. Um, I really did not plan this well, slash at all. Um, so it's just going to be a, a bit free form. Um, I'm going to read another poem from my book. Hello, this is my book. Ooh, published by the Your Shelf Press. Um, and this is the first book actually published by the Your Shelf Press. We're going to be publishing a couple more later this year. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, some exciting stuff. We're going to be opening submissions soon as well, as soon as I get my ass into gear. Um, so this is my book. It's a book of poems. It's called All Those Bodies and They're Moving. And um, it is just full of expressions of my sadness, angst, rage, uh, humor, I guess, as well. I think the world's a pretty funny place. Not always in a good way. Um, but yeah, so I sort of wrote these poems, turned them into a book, we've published it, and um, some of you have ordered it and read it, and some of you hopefully will be receiving it very soon. Uh, we have sent out all existing orders, um, so if you're waiting for it still, it is on its way to you. Um, but also, if you haven't read it yet, and you would like to read it, then get in touch. I will try to send out some more in the post when I can get to the, um, to the post office, but, um, I'll also send out some PDFs of the, or EPUBs, or however you kids read your books online these days. Um, <laughs> so let me know, um, and you know, hopefully that can tide everyone over for a bit. I've just seen <laughs> uh, the first recommend, uh, the, our, our first uh, request rather um, from Rob. Uh, Instagram knows one of the first few poems in the collection. It's also weirdly my mom's favorite poem in the collection, but she doesn't use Instagram, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, here you go. This is Instagram knows. <clears throat> Instagram knows who you used to be in love with and the regrets you've harbored darkly, unspoken resentment, secret fetish, the friendships you feign to maintain. I hope you're afraid of the backlash. The machine will call you out. You think you can trick these algorithms as if you know better than digital fact, consecutive searches, seamless scrolling, all the absent-minded tapping, swiping. Every one of us a sleuth and a stalker, as if denial was the time you spent between each separate check of the screen. What the gods have scripted for us has been fully developed, implemented, an update underway. It's in the pipeline, but your fix will not be ready on time. In the downtime, left alone to remember life the way it was, unfiltered, unimproved, the unlovable and the truth. Thank you. Um, weird. I don't think I've ever, um, I don't think I've ever read any of the poems that are in this collection out loud to other people before. Maybe one. Um, so that's kind of scary, kind of fun. Um, 
if y'all have read this, if you have a copy, if you have a favorite poem, tell me. I'll read your favorite poems uh, at some point. Um, how's everyone doing? Everyone good? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Um, how is everyone? This is fun, I think. I don't know, I'm having fun. It's, again, just stream of consciousness nonsense coming out of my mouth, and then occasionally that's broken up with um, with a poem. There's also these heart things. I, I'm such an old person. There's these heart things that keep going like up and down the screen, and I assume that that means that people are liking. I don't really know how this live stuff works. I'm so old. Um, okay, let's read another poem. Another one not by me. Here we go. Kate Tempest, Running Upon the Wires. This is another one of my favorite collections. Da, da, da. Okay, this is the titular poem, Running Upon the Wires. Yes, we do repeat. Motifs occur again, again. This does not mean we are not new. You are not her. This is not them. A nice short poem, which actually reminds me of a poem I shared the other day, which I think y'all will like. Again, hang on. I'm so disorganized because I didn't plan this. So this is uh, Yursa Daily Ward Bone, another one of my favorite collections. Yursa is amazing as well. Um, okay, here we go, page 54. Do, do, do. <clears throat> Another short one for y'all. What is now will soon be past. Just because you do it doesn't mean you always will. Whether you're dancing dust or breathing light, you're never exactly the same twice. Just, again, more kind of thoughts like that that make the weird times that we're living in feel a bit more um, digestible and bearable because they're kind of scary. But it's all good, it's all fine. I'll read another poem. Okay, this is a, gonna be a slightly longer one. See if I can find it. Do, do, do. Most of this live stream is just me searching for poems. I assume there's a metaphor in that, but I'm evidently not a good enough writer to figure that one out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so this is uh, Nikita Gill's Great Goddesses. Um, this is a place to find purpose. To craft purpose from birth is no easy task, not even if you are a goddess destined and Olympus given, not when you are eyed with suspicion and every god has a bet to catch you mid-misstep because it unnerves them how you are both wisdom and woman. The problem, of course, is being too unusual and too clever. It draws Hera's ire and Zeus's favor. You prefer books to people, you are quiet, always in contemplation, more powerful in your solitude. But where do you find silence on this mountain brimming with gossiping, raucous immortals? That's why you didn't, didn't it? Ew. I messed that up. <sighs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. That's why you did it, didn't you, Athena? When you couldn't find a place of solitude, you built it. The first ever library, the Library of Alexandria. Poems about books are my favorite. Um, I had an idea for one more thing that I could read to you. Did someone request some? Oh, someone's requested some Hera Lindsay Bird. Okay, good. I fucking love Hera Lindsay Bird. Um, I actually only have this book of hers, Sincerity, Irony, um, at the minute, because her other two books are out on loan, and <laughs> God knows when I'm going to get them back, because the world is crazy. Let's see if I can find... A good Harry Lindsay Bird poem in this collection. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to. I don't have Monica right now, Ruby. It's my favorite poem though. Um, hang on. Okay, I, mm, I'll try and find a copy of Monica online. And then next time I do this, I'll read Monica for you, Ruby, because it is my favorite poem and I want to read it. Is Monica online? Okay, I'm going to, if someone, if someone wants to, no, that's not going to work. Okay, fuck it. <laughs> oh, this is going so well. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. This is untitled, as I think all the poems are in, uh, in irony. Sincerity. 
<clears throat> this is from the irony section. You tell the woman you're sleeping with you're not looking for a serious relationship due to deep-seated commitment issues, and in doing so, accidentally cultivate a moment of shared intimacy that prompts her to cautiously reveal her own personal shortcomings, which are both numerous and relatable, causing you to instantly fall in love and remain together for many years in a monogamous partnership based on radical mutual honesty. So, you know... <clears throat> I just love this. Hundreds of lucky felines haunt the ruins where Caesar was murdered. Um, just little things. Here we go, another one. A fire station is burning on the other side of town. Two ambulances, which are on their way to the scene of the fire, collide, injuring both drivers. Unfortunately, the hospital which both drivers are taken to has been struck, oh God, by a deadly pandemic, killing everyone within a 10 mile radius. This was not the poem to read today. The entire town ascends to heaven where they are greeted by God, who is wearing a bucket hat and a Frankie Loves Hollywood t-shirt. Now that's irony. Um, for those asking this collection here, Sincerity, Irony, um, it was published last year by uh, Klim Type Foundry, and it's essentially a specimen book for a font that um, was developed by Klim Type Foundry and Tira Lindsay Bird together. Um, and it's basically got some poems here on Sincerity in the white section sincerity and then irony there's some poems and then right in the middle there's this really weird amazing pink section which is a short lecture on sincerity and irony uh and it's all in this like silvery foil um it's fun i love it it's one of my favorite books um i will try and get some other hero lindsay birds specifically monica for you all uh sylvia plath someone's just requested plath Where's Plath? Here's Plath. Okay. Do, do, do. <laughs> That's a good Plath poem to read. There's a happy one, isn't there? I hope. <laughs> okay, I've got one. Do, do, do. Sorry, you're having to deal with all my compulsive sing-song noises, which are probably very amelodic, because I'm slightly tone deaf. This is Kindness from Sylvia Plath's Ariel. Hi, Ariel. <laughs> kindness glides about my house. Dame Kindness, she is so nice. The blue and red jewels of her rings smoke in the windows. The mirrors are filling with smiles. What is so real is the cry of a child. A rabbit's cry may be wilder, but it has no soul. Sugar can cure everything, so Kindness says. Sugar is a necessary fluid. Its crystals a little poultice. A kindness, kindness sweetly picking up pieces. My Japanese silks, desperate butterflies. Maybe pinned any minute. Ane oh God, anesthetized. Can't say it. And here you come with a cup of tea, wreathed in steam. The blood jet is poetry. There is no stopping it. You hand me two children, two roses. Can we see the new Nick Cave book you got? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Do, do, do. <clears throat> Hang on a second. I'm still here, as you can maybe tell. Oh, but my leg is cramping. There we go. Hello again. So this is the new Nick Cave book, Stranger Than Kindness. It's a chunky one. Um, and this is the limited slipcase edition, which I'm very happy about. So this is the actual book itself. Stranger Than Kindness, Nick Cave, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna do, I, just, I feel like I'm doing, oh, thank you. I love this shirt, I never wear it. Um, it's signed by Nick Cave. Uh, sorry to rub that in. Um, I feel like I'm doing one of those like unboxing videos. I feel like kids would love this shit. Um, okay, so there's like, Lots of images in the book. Sorry, it's huge. It's bigger than my head. It's bigger than my phone. I'm like, how do I show this to the camera? Um, it's a really, really pretty book. And um, as well as these pictures and a typewriter. Love it. 
um, as well as the pictures and, you know, copies of notes. There's an essay by Darcy Steinke, um, and then there's also this opening bit by Nick Cave, which maybe I'll read. Yeah, I'll read this little bit for you all. <clears throat> so this is the introduction to uh, Stranger Than Kindness by Nick Cave. One, you are born, you build yourself piece by piece. You construct a narrative. You become an individual, surrounding yourself with all that you love. You are wounded too, sometimes, and left scarred. Yet you become a heroic and unique embodiment of both the things you cherish and the things that caused you pain. As you grow into this living idea, you become instantly recognizable among the billions of faces in the world. You become that which you think you are. You stand before the world and say, I am here and this is who I am. Love it. Um, okay, hang on. I need to catch up with all of y'all requests. Um, maybe a Florence poem, that's a good idea. Who doesn't love a good Florence poem? Okay. So this is Useless Magic by Florence Welsh. Um, I'm probably gonna read New York Poem for Polly because that's, that's who I am. Okay, this is New York Poem for Polly by Florence Welsh. <clears throat> My mother and father come to me in visions and I can feel their arms of love stretch out across the sea, across time, across divorces, deception and death. And I know that I am their daughter and I know that they love me despite the damage. We walk past the hotel where we nearly died, a kind of passive double suicide, wave at the ghosts of ourselves, cold and still inside, run screaming into the street, this is the new shit, heady with pagan worship of water towers, fire escapes, ever reaching high as hope. Then we are dead, and we are together in other New York, which is both heaven and hell, and we have coffee and ice cream and aching hearts. Okay. Body of what? That's a good one. Okay, hang on. Oh, whereabouts is that in the book? That's in the how big, how blue section, isn't it? Because it's the handwritten one. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to try and read this handwriting, but I'm useless at reading handwriting. This is, um, I guess, Body of Water by Florence Welsh. To give yourself over to another body, that's all you want, really. To be out of your own and consumed by another. To swim inside the skin of your lover. Not have to break, not have to think. But you can't live in love and salt water no drink. We're dying of thirst, so we feast on each other. The sea is still our violent mother. The blood round here pours down like water, each wave a lamb led to the slaughter. And like children that she just can't teach, we break and break and break and break ourselves upon the beach. Um, Charles Welsh, use this magic. Um, so what have we had so far? Let's recap. We had, for, for, for y'all newcomers, we had some Gerard Manley Hopkins, some Sean Hewitt, Kate Tempest, Yersa Daly Ward, Nikita Gill, Sylvia Plath, Florence Welsh, Nick Cave, and also a bit of me. We're going to go back to me now because I'm running out of ideas. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Okay, let's read this one. It's kind of sad. Here we go. <clears throat> also, um, it's called... Oh, you're welcome, Tessa. Um, it's called In the Living Room, and it's super... Um, I feel it a lot right now because I'm living in my living room, obviously. Um, I don't know about all of you, but I have to work somewhere. Um, and my desk is in our living room because we don't have much space because we live in a little two-bed uh, flat and the other bedroom is used for my partner's um, office. So I'm here in the living room. I spent all my time here. And yeah, this is a poem about being in a living room on a sofa or whatever and thinking about love. <clears throat> in the living room. It feels like there's a romantic somewhere. He died inside of me, I think. 
and it's a debt I'll never repay. I want the kind of love that's an antique golden egg, old CDs of Italian music waltzing, green sofas with gold embellishments, and rings that spark infernos in quiet four-bedroom family houses, parents who never divorced and could show their children true affection. Romance is everything I can't achieve but love in the dark to remember. I let myself down. I do it to myself all the time. The big red shining self-destruct button is my knee-jerk reaction every time. But I'm trying hard not to be my parents. I only know what it means to be orphaned, desolate. Yet captives underground dream of stars, and so do I. Or at least I guess what a star might look like. I should be content with loneliness. I'm all I need. I'm all I've ever had. Still the wanting, always starving for more. A pass at a block for the void, forever falling out of it, and it from me. For once, I want to be the subject in someone else's poem. It's so tiring to always be conjuring, never arrested in writing, never rested. Can't even imagine the thrill or the love. Who will write me love poems, pitching woo? Why will no one do old school crazy shit for me? Ultimately, I'm just a fascist for love, and I'll sink every city until I control it. Only a grand gesture can disarm the bomb, or even just a flower, just the one. <clears throat> so, there you go. Sad love poem. I know what the gays want, and it's sad love poems. Um, speaking of what the gays want, okay, here we go. Um, Connor, I know you like that line. I see you asking for Patti Smith. I'm gonna... Oh, I don't know if I have Health Lantern anywhere. I'm going to see what I have by Patti Smith, and I'll read you all something in a second. Um, first, I'm going to read you another one of my poems. Yay for vanity. Um, here we go. So as you may or may not know, I have a slight um, thing for Marge Simpson. She is my spirit animal. And I'm actually working on a book of um, the one I just read, Matt. That poem that I just read was called In the Living Room. Um, so I have a thing for Marge Simpson. I'm in love with her. And, um, I've been working on a collection of poems called Marjorie, which is basically just a whole big old book of Marge poems. And I'm going to read one that's, well, the only Marge book poem that's in my book. Uh, it's called Marge Simpson's Haircut. Uh, and as you can see, it's tall, like Marge Simpson's hair. Um, it's the little things, you know. Okay. Marge Simpson's haircut. See me when you come home to me. That's all I want. Don't look past me. Please find me in the living room, my fresh indent on the sofa, alone and bored. Your faithful parody, just waiting for that moment. Your eyes narrow, looking up and down, uncertainty changing to fixity, and a compliment brought home like a souvenir for your needy, lonely child but you walk through me, empty-handed. I'm still here, every hair still growing, dark, a trim unrecognizable. Maybe I'll bleach it blonde, maybe I'll shear it off, maybe I'll disappear entirely. Okay, that's enough of me for now. Um, not that there ever could be such a thing. Let's see if I have, what was the one that Ariel requested? Let's see, Health Lantern. Let's see if I have Health Lantern up in this. This is the collected lyrics, so I don't know if it'll be in here, but I think there were some poems and stuff, yeah. There's no table of contents. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Health Lantern is in here, but we're going to read... Um, We're going to read Work Song by Patti Smith from the Collected Lyrics. <clears throat> Work Song. I was working real hard to show the world what I could do. Oh, I guess I never dreamed I'd have to. World spins, some photographs, how I love to laugh when the crowd laughs, while love slips through a theater that is full. But ooh, baby, when the crowd goes home and I turn in and I realize I'm alone. I can't believe I had to. I was working real hard to show the world what I could do. Oh, I guess I never dreamed I'd have to. I had to. I had to sacrifice you. Patty's birth. Yes. 
Um, okay, so I'm gonna... Oh my god, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm sorry. To everyone who is still sticking in, you are troopers. Um, I didn't realize how long I'd been waffling on. So I'm gonna read... Uh, I'm gonna read two more poems. I haven't figured out what those two poems are. If you have any final recommendations, get them in now. Um, but if not, I'm going to read to you... Let's try, let's try some Ocean Vuong, Night Sky with Exit Wounds, one of my many, many favorite collections, apparently. Um, let's see. Okay, I think I might have posted this one the other day. Um, oh, thank you, Ariel. Good luck with your essay writing. And stay healthy as well. These are scary times. Okay, Ocean Wong, this is Torso of Air. <clears throat> Suppose you do change your life, and the body is more than a portion of night, sealed with bruises. Suppose you woke and found your shadow replaced by a black wolf, the boy beautiful and gone. So you take the knife to the wall instead. You carve and carve until a coin of light appears, and you get to look in, at last, on happiness the eye staring back from the other side, waiting. <laughs> I'm glad you stayed for Vuong, Ariel. It's one of my favorite poets, and that's one of my favorite poems, Torso of Air. Um, okay, I'm going to read one more poem again from my book, because I am a narcissist. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to tell you about some of the books I'm reading at the minute, because you are all apparently at my mercy. Um... So, this is my main current read. I'm hoping to finish this today. Uh, it's called A Line Made by Walking by Sarah Baum. Um, it's her, her second novel. Uh, this was her first, Spills Same or Fall Too With It, which I finished reading the other day. Uh, she has a new book out this week from Tramp Press, who are one of my absolute favorite publishers and just the coolest, best people alive. Uh, Sarah Baum's new work is called Handiwork and um, I'm excited to read it, but I hadn't read, because I'm a bad person, I hadn't read her other books, so I'm finishing this, and then hopefully Handiwork will arrive very soon, and I can finish that too. Um, other books that I am reading currently, let's see, I haven't started some of these, there's so many, honestly. Um, I used to have, like, nightmares that I was, like, drowning in books, um, like, like the I was in bed and then like a tower of books just fell over on me and I was just, yeah. Um, so that's fun. I'm reading some Ted Hughes birthday letters at the minute. Uh, I'm reading some Patrick Kavanaugh collected poems at the minute. Also, I've been reading these forever, but Emma and Little Women, two amazing classics and both turned into really cool, good films that were out quite recently. And um, yeah, I think that's, more or less everything I'm reading kind of very actively at the minute. Uh, there's a few other little bits, poetry and, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, would love to see your book collection one day. Well, I mean, <laughs> my book collection is all over the place. We have two shelves in here, um, which maybe I'll show you if I can at the end. Oh, maybe I'll try showing you now. Um, it's a bit of a mess in my living space right now because I'm disorganized. Um, Okay, here we go. Also, you're going to have to uh, forgive the state of this one bookshelf because I've obviously just taken a ton of poetry books out, so it's going to look pretty empty, but here we go. Okay. Do, do, do. So, my shelves. There we go. This is one bookshelf. These are my poems, mostly. The top two shelves are pretty much all poetry. That corner there is... Um, a bit of Maggie Nelson and a bit of Anne Carson as well. Down here we have sort of musicians, so Nick Cave, Johnny Cash, Joni Mitchell, Kate Bush, Florence, Patti Smith, some more of my kind of to read pile. Uh, and then if you'll follow me over here, we have my Stephen King shelf um, with some Ducks New Report and a couple of other things thrown in at the top for good measure. Um, that's basically, I'm trying to turn this around now, Turn the ship around. Okay. Um, hello again. Uh, so that's everything that's in this room. The rest of my book collection is hidden away in various other places, including my very messy bedroom, which I will not show you today. Um, 
you'll have to wait till the third date to see my bedroom. Um, so if that is it for now, if anyone, sorry, I'm moving my camera. Okay. If anyone has any final requests, now is the time. Uh, but I'm going to close with one more poem from Mabuk. And then, um, yeah, maybe I'll do this again next week, read some, t or soon, I don't know. Um, it's nice just to talk out loud um, <laughs> to other people and to have people listen. Um, because as you know, or may not know, in the UK currently, we are in lockdown. So very restricted as to where we can go, what we can do, who we can see and speak to. Um, but yeah, hopefully this has been some comfort for some of you or a bit fun. Um, it has been for me. Read that poem of yours about the birds or something. I don't remember exactly, but I loved it. Okay, <laughs> I can't remember which one that is, and it might not be one that's in this book. So I will have a look for that, and I will read that one next time. Remind me. Um, but I'm going to close now with the title poem from this book. It's called All Those Bodies and Their Moving. Um, I don't think I've ever read this one aloud ever to myself or anyone else. So, you know, this is going to be... An experience. Here we go. Thank you all for listening. <clears throat> Living in a pit of writhing bodies, climbing its bliss, this mass of mass-produced despair, like Renaissance-painted agonies staggering drunk at the bottom, sort of orgasmic, mostly tragic. It's sublime to lay yourself down so lovingly, ignorant and so supine, certain only of our self-sabotaging listlessness, sliding heavy, tapping out. To live a life pit conscious is in a sense the only salvation, or at least it gives me the smugness to sermonize, crying out wishes that you all might listen to the self-appointed seer of man-made craters, eyes that search to all the deepest parts, just to tell you things you've known subconsciously in all seriousness. The bottom's fallen out, and bodies are sinking just to plug it, stuck fast for endless time as others make their lives on these unpeaceful bones. All of the bodies, all of the time. Surreal swimming and the rolling waves of flesh, the mundane shit, these horrors of our disconnectedness. Of course, the pit is a poem, but in another truer way, it's a fucking pit. And we are all of us in it, all of us just bodies moving, none of us coming close to the sacred rim, long promised and awaited, cusp of liberation, the chance to stand on soil not so fevered, the solidity we've been missing, to stand and pant and rage, and then at last to sit and rest and sleep and wake and cease. That was all those bodies and they're moving by me, um, which you can order, if you like, on the um, Your Shelf website. So I'm going to sign off very soon. Uh, to wrap everything up, we read some poems from Jared Manley Hopkins, Sean Hewitt, Kate Tempest, Yursa Daly Ward, Nikita Gill, uh, Sylvia Plath, Nick Cave, well, it wasn't really a poem from Nick Cave, but let's go with it, uh, Florence Welsh, Patty Smith, Ocean Vuong, I talked about... Sarah Baum. This is a really good book, by the way. I'm really enjoying this. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, and obviously, read some of my poems. Again, hashtag get that promo. Um, thank you all for listening. This has been really fun. Um, if you enjoyed this, let me know. Um, tell your friends. I'll try and... I don't know how this works. I'm hoping this will, like, stay online so that people can watch it again. Hopefully. Um, but, uh, yeah, let me know. And I maybe we'll do this again sometime if people want me to. And if there's a better time that I can be doing this for most people, give me some suggestions. I'll see what I can uh, work out. Uh, yeah, thanks again. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Take care, please. Hold on to each other, etc.